This video from Learn Electrics looks at helping you to understand IP codes better, either for exam or assessment preparation, or just to make your knowledge of this subject better. We show you where to find the IP codes in the books and give you guidance on what you should be looking for with guided questions and answers. Frequently asked questions have included things like, why are there so many IP codes? Where am I going to find them in the books? What sort of questions might be asked? And a recent social media post asked, if I look in the wiring regulations book, sometimes it's an AD number and at other times it is IP. Why is this? Is there a difference? Beginning with BS7671 wiring regulations, where do we find IP codes in here? And in this video, it will be the Brown Amendment 2 book that we use. Lots of people skip past the contents page on page 3, but this is, for me, very important in guiding you to the right part of the book. It's there, so use it. Towards the bottom of page 3 will be found Appendix number 5, Classification of External Influences, a very useful appendix, and we are directed towards page 492 of the Brown Book. We can go there now, and if we look at page 493, we will find, among many others, two groups of influences. AD for water-related influences, and AE for the influence of foreign bodies, or solid objects, if you like. The numbering of them will become clearer in a few minutes. Remember how to find this page. You will use it a lot. Page 493 can be a little confusing at first sight. It is actually three separate columns of information and me, personally, I always draw two vertical lines down my own book in order to make the data more user-friendly and readable. The AD category was divided into eight headings, but on page 497 this will be expanded to give more detail. For example, AD4 splashes means very little until you look at page 497 where it gives a lot more information about the type of splash the direction of the splash and so on and now we can see the relationship between the ad terminology that the regs book uses and ip codes that most of our trades uses ad4 is the same as ipx4 and ad5 matches ipx5 but please don't assume that they all follow this rule. They don't. Take a look at the page again. Turn over the page to page 498 and we have the AE category for foreign bodies for solids. This time AE3 approximates to IP4X for very small objects that are not less than 1mm in diameter, perhaps a piece of wire. When using IP numbers, it is only external influence categories AD and AE that will have an equivalent IP number. Other influences, such as temperature or height above sea level, do not have an IP code. It's just for solids and liquids. Look at how the numbers are arranged. The X means not specified for that position. So IPX4 is ingress protection level 4 for water only. The X for solids is not applicable for that item. IP4X is for solids and in this case ingress protection level 4 for foreign bodies or solids only with no specification for water. And then there is IP44 and this is a common specification. Ingress protection level 4 for water and level 4 for foreign bodies. So how does this relate to the AD numbering system? IPX4 is AD4 only and IP4X is AE3 only and IP44 will be AE3 and AD4 combined. If we take the IP44 code, the first number is for solids and the second number is for water. There will always be in this order solids first, 
water second. The letter X in the code really does matter. It's a place marker. It helps us to decide if we are talking about solids or liquids. If we only had IP4, do we mean IPX4 or do we mean IP4X? It matters. Look at bathroom locations as an example on page 244 of the brown book. Inside the bathtub itself will be zone zero. Any installed electrical equipment, lights perhaps, must be protected against the ingress of water to at least IPX7. Compare this with swimming pool locations on page 249. There is still a zone zero inside the swimming pool, but the IP code is now IPX8. This is because a swimming pool can have more depth than a bathtub and greater depth means greater water pressure and a need for a greater degree of protection. And notice that on this page there is also an AD code specified, AD8, the same as IPX8. So the regs will sometimes use only IP codes sometimes only AD or AE codes, and sometimes a mixture of both. Now look at caravan and camping parks on page 268 in particular. Again, the page has AD and AE references and also quotes IP numbers. We must be able to interchange these different standards and understanding Appendix 5 is a good starting point. What does the index say about IP codes? Will the index help us to find the right numbers? Well, let's look. Find page 592 in the regs book where we have an entry that says IP codes C degree of protection. OK, let's go to page 583 then and search for degree of protection. Here we will find lots of locations that reference IP codes that have their own particular requirements. Again, learn to find this page quickly, especially in electrical exams. Any regulation beginning with a 700 number, such as 701, 702, etc., will be a special location mentioned in Part 7 of the book. And regulations with a 400 number will be in the general part of the regulations book under Part 4 for safety. The on-site guide or OSG contains some brief but very useful references to IP codes. Do not overlook the information that is in the on-site guide, the Brown Amendment 2 edition. Appendix L on page 233 of the on-site guide is where we need to be and we should all have a copy of this. There are only two pages to the appendix but they are so very useful and will help enormously in your understanding. Some domestic electricians will have a copy of the Electrician's Guide to the Building Regulations, but to be honest, a lot of the information it contains is also relevant to commercial and industrial premises, especially the tables on cable lengths, breaker sizes and ZS measurements, but more on this in another video. The book we use here has a brown stripe across the front cover to show it is updated to Amendment 2. If you have the book, take a look at pages 81 and 86. The two tables shown describe different scenarios and the IP codes that apply. Remember, the swimming pools are different to bathrooms. Now that we've talked about the books, let's put that knowledge into practice. We have here eight very easy questions that will reinforce your understanding. The questions are guided, meaning that we actually tell you where to look, the relevant pages, and this helps you to begin to recognise the different parts of the book and where to find the answers during an exam. Imitating exam style questions, there are four possible answers to choose from. Only one is the most appropriate for that question. Take your time with them, read the actual question on the first slide of each question and pause the video to attempt an answer yourself if you wish. You will certainly benefit from this. 
The next slide for each question will give you our suggestion of where to find the answer, the page number and the regulation involved. Question 1 then. Section 416 of BS 7671 requires that the horizontal top surface of a barrier or enclosure, which is readily accessible, shall provide a degree of protection of at least what? And four possible answers, as you will find in online exams. Pause the video if you're confident and make a choice. Answers are on the next slide. The question tells us to go to section 416, which begins on page 80 of BS 7671. Looking at regulation 416.2.2, we have the answer that we seek. The degree of protection should be at least IPXXD or IP4X, and we should choose answer C. The answer to question 2 will be found in the on-site guide. The question is, according to the on-site guide, Appendix L, a degree of protection of IPXXB indicates that something, and we need to complete the wording. Four choices, pause the video and look for the answer in the on-site guide. We should refer to Appendix L of the on-site guide. It's on pages 233 and 234, just the two pages. Looking down the list of IP numbers, we will find IP XXB and the wording access of a finger shall not be possible. So we should choose answer D. Now for question 3. It asks Section 416 of BS 7671 requires that live parts shall be inside enclosures or behind barriers with a degree of protection of at least and then four choices of answer. All the information that you need is in the question. Pause the video and find the answer. The question tells us it is in section 416. And this begins on page 80 of BS 7671 wiring regulations. And regulation 416.2.1 gives us the answer, which is IPXXB or IP2X. So choose answer D. Question 4 is next. In a bathroom, the installed electrical equipment in zone 0 shall have a degree of protection of at least what? And four choices. Regulations specific to bathrooms are found in part 7 of the regulations in their own section. So find section 701 beginning on page 242 and then look for regulation 701 dot five one two dot two external influences the answer is then easily found it says in zone zero at least ip x seven and we will choose answer d this is question five in a swimming pool location the installed electrical equipment in zone zero shall have a degree of protection of at least something Pause the video, find the right section, and attempt an answer. Here is the answer. Swimming pool locations are in part 7 of the BS 7671 Wiring Regulations book. Find section 702, beginning on page 247, and then find regulation 702.512.2, External Influences. The answer is, in zone 0, at least IPX8, and the answer choice is B. Have you noticed that external influences and IP codes were in regulation 701.512.2 for bathrooms, and in 702.512.2 for swimming pool locations? 512.2 is used in both regulations. Only the section number 701 or 702 is changing. And the same pattern will be repeated for other special locations. 
the section number followed by 512.2. Check this out with other special locations. It's a good idea to remember this in your exams or assessments. Question 6 asks, In agricultural premises, electrical equipment shall have a degree of protection of at least what? And then four choices. Again, pause the video, find the correct special location and attempt an answer. Agricultural and horticultural premises are to be found in Part 7 in Section 705, beginning on page 260. Remember 512.2 from the previous slide. We are going to use it again. You are in Section 705, so find Regulation 705.512.2 External Influences and there is the answer. Electrical equipment shall have a degree of protection of at least IP44 and we choose answer A. Next is question number 7. With reference to Appendix 5 of BS7671, splashes of water would be influence category what? The question tells you which appendix to look in. The answer would be within those few pages. Pause the video and have a go. If you looked on the contents page, you will know that Appendix 5 begins on page 492. Find it and then look at page 493 and compare each of the answer choices with the information on the page. The answer is AD4, splashes of water, and our choice should be answer A. And finally, question 8. With reference to Appendix 5 of BS7671, an external influence of AE3 is considered equivalent to, and you must make a choice. Pause the video, attempt an answer. The question tells us that this is Appendix 5 again. Now we need a little more information than the last question. So find the page that gives details of all the AE codes, which is page 498, and then look for AE3, which is very small objects, 1mm. The appendix tells us that AE3 is equivalent to IP4X, and we should choose answer B. Questions on IP codes will always come up in exams. In practical assessments and inspections, you will be expected to observe and report on the IP codes. Does a piece of equipment not have the correct degree of protection? Do you know what it should be? If you know where to find the information, the rest is easy. The information is spread across several pages and across different books, but hopefully now, this video has helped to put the IP codes into some sort of order, an organised pattern. Practice in finding IP codes will bring confidence and accuracy. Make sure that you can find IP codes and degrees of protection in the indexes. Use the contents pages to find the appendix that you need. There is lots of information to help you. And most special locations will contain external influence regulations that detail the relevant IP codes for that specific special location. Make sure that you can find these special locations quickly and easily. Learn to use the books that are available to you in the exams and assessments. They are there to help you. We hope you've enjoyed this video and we thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.